Uh, do we have other questions here? I got one. Yes, sir. So in Ezekiel 1, uh -huh. I, was, I was reading the, uh, the description of the cherubim, but uh -huh. I can't make heads or tails of what they're supposed to look like. Because it says something like they have four faces, and they yes. go forward, and it mm -hmm. doesn't look like they're turning. If they go another direction, and they're not turning. Uh -huh. Then they have six wings, but I don't uh -huh. I, I tried to read the orientation, and it didn't click with me. Okay, then. So then, uh, what is it that confused you? Is it because uh, that whole uh, description that you read, you just don't know what it's talking about? Or is it something in there that confused you, so that contradict each other? Yeah. Like, Got it. Got it. You are asking the wrong person on that one. You have to, <laughs> ask, you have to ask the great I am that I am what they look like. So to be quite honest, I don't think anyone out there can give a 100% perfect picture of them. But what I'm going to do is give as, uh, so not precise, but accurate description. That's what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to give an accurate description. Not precise, but accurate. Because I don't think anyone can draw a perfect picture. Like for example, Jesus Christ, we already got his description in the Bible, but no one can give a perfect picture of Jesus Christ when we draw him. Only we'll know that face to face. So that's what I simply mean right there, okay? So let's look at Ezekiel 1. So I'll just do the best that I can right over here in Ezekiel chapter 1 concerning their description. But you're also going to see something where it seems like a contradiction where we're going to go to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation 4. There's going to be like a contradiction here it looks like. And then we're going to look at verse 7. Revelation 4, 7 and Ezekiel 1. Okay. I'm going to try to make this short, if I can make it short, because this one's going to be a long one right here. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm glad you asked these kinds of questions. It's because of that. That way people can really uh, look at Bible believers, what they're actually studying, what they're actually talking about. This is a good testimony. Okay. So let's look at Ezekiel chapter 1. In order to give a proper description and a order to understand a fuller picture. Let's start off at verse 5. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. Now, here's something very telling. It also said right here in verse 5, likeness. So Ezekiel made sure to mention that because he even himself, when he sees it, he can't describe it as precise as he can. Now think about this. Paul even mentioned at the book of Corinthians, that even though he saw it all, he can't even say it. And he, he's not even allowed to say some things. Uh, John, he even said that if I were to say everything, that there would be so many books to write about it at John chapter 21. So uh, Daniel, when he actually saw the visions and even the bees, what did he say? He said that it was too much for him. He couldn't even ha have, he even had trouble understanding. That's the reason why at the beginning, I was saying that, is that because no one can give a perfect, precise description of them. Amen. See, no, even if you see it 100%. So let's look at Ezekiel chapter 1. Keep reading right here. Verse 5, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings. So notice right here their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. That's key. So it didn't say face, likeness. So we know then it's going to look like a typical person, so to speak. So then let's put this right here as a likeness of a man. But then what we're going to notice right here is that within this likeness of a man, there's going to be a difference right here. There's going to be a difference right here. Let's keep reading. Let me move to the side. That way you can see the wonderful artwork. <laughs> and everyone had what? Four faces, and everyone had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Okay, so notice right here that feet were straight feet, and sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, so to speak. That's why Satan, he's known to be a cherubim as well, right? That's why in cartoon drawings, they give him a what? A cleft foot. See? They give him a cleft foot. So there's one description right there. And they're straight feet as well. Now, it said sparkle like the color of burnished brass. That's interesting. So we won't turn there for time's sake, but at Revelation, uh, so I, 
four, not one. But here's the other one, Revelation chapter one. What did it say? This creature that came out is actually the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And his feet were like unto what? See, furnished brass. See, it's glowing. So it's glowing right here, furnished brass. All right, let's keep reading right here. Verse 8, And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. And they four had faces, uh, uh, they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went everyone straight forward. As for the like, uh, so we see right here that they had in verse 8 the hands of a man under their wings. So have you ever noticed certain birds when they fly uh, or certain creatures or in like mythical drawings? They'll put a picture of a, some, uh, some kind of hand, even though it doesn't look like a man's hand, underneath the wing. So that's the kind of the idea right here we see. Where do people get these ideas from? The Bible was way ahead of you. The Bible was way ahead of you. Oh, Batman with his wings going out like that? I mean, hey, you got to realize this. The Ezekiel 1 already told you something like that a long time ago. All right, let's keep reading right here. They four had their faces and their wings. So then you'll see right here that they had their wings, uh, they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. Ah, this is interesting right here. So it looked like they had four sides. Why? Because at verse 6 they had four faces. So you got to realize this, is that these kind of creatures, they have four sides to them. That's the idea. So one right here, one right here, one right here, one right here. Which is very interesting why God would be give those kind of dimensions as north, south, east, and west. You, a lot of people think that the number four, that it could be the biblical number of north, south, east, and west. So this is very interesting right here. Okay, anyways, let's keep reading right here. Verse 9, their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went to everyone straight forward. So there were wings that were joined. Okay, keep that in mind. Verse 10, as for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. Okay, so we see right here the right side had the face of a lion and the face of a man. And they four also had the face of the ox and the face of an eagle on the left side. Now it could be this. In verse 10, notice this says face of a man, but it doesn't mention the direction. And then it says the face of a lion on the right side. So it could be that right here, that concerning the, uh, let's see, what should I draw them with? Let's draw them in purple right here. So the likeness of a man, right? So let's do all this one at a time. Likeness of a man. I don't have time to write all these words, so I'll just simply draw it out. That way we can get going. So then we see right here, it said the right side. Is that correct, the lion? Yeah, so the lion is on the right side here. So the creature, the lion right here, he is noticed to be on the right side right here. He is noticed to be on the right side right here. So the lion is here on the right side. And then, oh, thank you. Okay, so thank you. So the lion is right here on the right side. And the man. So it could be, but notice what's on the left. What is on the left? It says right here that in verse uh, 10, the face of an ox on the left side. So the ox is on the left. So, now, this is just a separate teaching, but remember I talked about Satan being the ox right here? So it shows that he's never on the right, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, so it could show right here that he's never on the right right here. So that can be very interesting right here. So we see the ox right here, the ox. So then we see the ox on the left. Now, it could mean this. It could mean then that the ox is on the left, the lion's on the right, and then the man and then the eagle, they're uh, the front and the back. Or, or it could be this. It could be that with this body, it's not like the face is forward. 
It could be like a diagonal thing. So it could be like a diagonal thing where the face of a man is right here, the face of a lion's right here, and then the face of an ox right here, and then the face of an eagle like that. That's what it could mean. So then basically ox and eagle's left, and then lion and man is on the right. Uh, right and <laughs> left. Okay. <laughs> okay then. So uh, did, I say ox and uh, did I say ox and eagle left? Yeah, so ox and eagle left. And then lion and man on the right, okay? If I switched it the other way around, I'm sorry. So anyways, let's draw the man right here. So let's say for now it's like this way, okay? So let's say for now that it's, that it's like this way right here with the man. And then uh, the eagle is going to be at the back. So then I'll just put it on top over here, the eagle. So then he's going to be somewhere over here at the back right here. So then he'll be at the back. Now, that is some creature right there, right? That is some creature. Okay, let's keep reading. Thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined together, and two covered their bodies. Okay, so then they had two that covered their bodies, and two wings every one were joined to another. Now, how many wings that they had in total is... Uh, man, I'm trying to do this from memory. I think it's six in total. That's how they came down to. So then we see right here, two wings of every one were joined one to another. So two wings clipped. And then two covered their bodies. And then they had wings uh, on their four sides as well. So then this creature, on how they would look, is at the four sides, right? So then we see the four sides right here. And then they had wings. Now they had two. Right, I have my notes in uh, back at home. So I remember I drew it all out actually and wrote it all out. So I forgot how to accurately do this. So I'm just going to do the best I can. But I do know this. They mention about wings that cover the legs right here. And then there were wings. Now if I'm recalling from memory, I could be wrong. And then the little one like this. Now, have you noticed certain creatures that God made that there seemed to be like a miniature wing underneath a bigger wing right there? That's why their wings were like joined one to another, it looks like. And then you got the hand of a man that sticks out over here. So then the hand of a man that sticks out over here. Now, that is some creature. That is some creature that it will show. No wonder uh, when Mary saw the angel Gabriel, you know, fear not. Yeah, Mary went, ah, like that probably. <laughs> if it was one of these, if it was a cherubim, she'd freak out even more. <laughs> she'd freak out even more. Now, the question is, why would they have wings that cover the feet? The reason why is this. We're going to go to the book of Revelation now. This is very interesting. Revelation chapter 4. We're going to look at verse 7. The first beast was like a lion, the second beast was like a calf, the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them, that's it, six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. So there's my confirmation right there. So it is six wings in total, see? It is six wings in total. Now, what we're going to notice right here is that concerning these angels, is uh, not these angels, excuse me, these angelic beings, these cherubims, is that these creatures had full of eyes within and without. So they had eyes everywhere. That's something. So remember, God, he, he sees everything, right? He sees everything. These creatures are getting more of God's power. So this is closer to where he sees everything right here, so to speak. So they get eyes everywhere. But not only that, they got four directions covered with eyes to see. You can't go behind their back and kill them, these cherubims. That's why you think that Satan is some kind of uh, little creature that you can mess with? You, you only got two eyes, man. Amen. This demonic being, he can go 360. See, he can do 360. He can do 360, this creature. Now, why would it have his legs covered? Look at verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night. See, they don't even rest either. 
saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now the question is this, is that why in verse 7 that John, he sees four different creatures, whereas in Ezekiel, it's the same creatures, but the, all of them have four faces. Very simple. He was seeing one of the creatures on every side. One of the creatures on every side. These creatures are truly a person, uh, the appearance of a man, but everywhere on all sides, whereas we're only one direction. These creatures are 360 direction. That's something. That's something right there. So um, that's why it's very interesting that concerning our God, you got to realize this, that our God, he is a 360 person that, that can go everywhere, within, without, everywhere. Perfect, perfect circle. That's why Jesus Christ is likened to the son of righteousness with healing in his wings. But that's why Satan, he wants to imitate that in being his own son god of worship. And that's, those sun symbols are everywhere in the Catholic Church, in Illuminati conspiracies, everywhere, see? And he puts an eye over there too, like, I'm the enlightened one. See, all of this comes up from there. But these people are singing to the Lord. So I got to wrap this up. So these people are singing to the Lord, right? Holy, holy, holy. So because they're singing to the Lord, that's why they need the wings. Why? Why to cover the feet? It is said that in the Orient, and you got to realize this, Jews come from Shem. The Orientals come from Shem. When they go to the presence of a king, it is essential that they cover their feet when they're before the throne. That's good. Amen. They cover their feet. That's why there are wings below, to cover it in the presence of the king up there. That's very telling. Not only that, what are these wings above doing? It's to cover them as well sometimes. Cover them where they don't see the presence of the Lord. Sometimes You notice how people, they don't look at the face of the king because out of dignity and respect. That's why there's some things that are above too that can cover it. That can be very telling as well. So you see right here that uh, this, because this figure is in a position of a God that's 360 all around. So he has to create 360 beings that can give him proper worship, so to speak. Mm -hmm. you, you had a hand raised. You had some nuggets. You had yes, some nuggets. Mm -hmm. because you were, you were telling us about how the uh, Orientals, they would mm -hmm. cover their feet. Actually, mm -hmm. they had very long sleeves on their clothing. So Correct, long sleeves. For their king, they would bow down like this. And Correct. They would cover their faces. Mm -hmm. And then you notice the wing is covering what? The hands. The hands, too. How about that? Not only that, uh, there's so much gold in here, but i got to wrap this up. You know what it's mentioned? This is where we get our little UFOs in the Bible. It mentioned the wheels. There are these little strange wheels below the feet, wherever the cherubim goes. What figure is this? 360. These UFO flying little beings. Woo! And not only that, furnished brass, right? That's why this thing is under near their feet. So they get heated up and they're like brash sometimes. Oh my goodness. All right, now I have to stop. I can go on and on. This is the somewhat approximate accurate depiction, all right? Not precise. If we get precise, this can be hours of study right here and we will be blown away about the creation of our God.